Hello and welcome to LTV News. I'm Daniel Adam and these are the day's top stories. Violent clashes continue in Egypt over the president's new decree. The death toll from a factory fire in Bangladesh reaches over 100. And Brazil reveals the name of its new 2014 World Cup mascot. Here are the top stories from the Middle East. Protesters in Egypt have once again clashed with riot police today. Many are angry at a new decree which extends President Mohamed Morsi's powers. Demonstrators accuse him of creating a dictatorship and want him to relinquish the new powers. Clashes between police and protesters continued in Cairo despite the Egyptian government's attempt to calm a furor raised by a decree that expanded President Mohamed Morsi's powers. Clashes between protests and, and police have run almost non-stop since 19th November, when a commemorative demonstration turned into violence. Amid low-level exchange of rocks and tear gas, security forces built walls of concrete blocks across major downtown roads in an attempt to separate protesters and police. Protesters fighting police on the outskirts of Tahrir Square near the US Embassy said they want to bring down the president's new decree. Local media has reported a figure of around 500 people to have been injured in the past three days of protests. The Mursi administration issued a statement saying that his nearly unchecked authority will only be temporary and it was not meant to concentrate his powers. The presidency pointed out it will still engage with all political forces to reach a common ground on the constitution. The decree by Morsi has turned months of growing polarisation into an open battle between his Muslim Brotherhood Party and Liberals, who fear a new dictatorship. Staying in Egypt now, and there was more violence in the country after a bomb blast struck a local government office. One member of the ruling Muslim Brotherhood was killed and more than 60 injured in, in the incident, which took place yesterday. The following report has more of the details. A Muslim Brotherhood member was killed and more than 60 others injured yesterday in an attack on the main office of the Brotherhood in the town of Damanur. It is believed the member was Islam Fathi Masood and that he was only 15 years old. A family member of the dead boy blamed thugs for the attack. Most believe the bomb strike may have been linked to recent clashes in the area as protesters took to the streets angry against a new decree passed by the country's president. The new law dramatically increases leader Mohamed al mursis powers, increasing fears that the country may be sliding into a dictatorship. Mursi's constitutional decree has brought supporters and opponents onto the street, and both are planning massive demonstrations in central Cairo tomorrow that many fear will lead to more violence. Some 17,000 participants are due to attend the latest round of UN climate talks later in Qatar's capital, Doha. Over the next two weeks, they'll be negotiating a new global deal on climate, but there's ongoing tensions between rich and poor countries. The choice of venue has surprised many, as all rich Qatar has some of the highest per capita emissions of carbon dioxide or CO2 in the world. However, many will be looking towards China and America to change their ways, as they release the most CO2 emissions every year. Environmentalists say that CO2 emissions are the main cause of global warming and some natural disasters. Moving on to world news now. The death toll from a factory fire in Bangladesh has now reached over 100. The incident which took place in the country's capital, Dhaka, has shocked many. Calls are now being made for more stringent safety measures as incidents like this are becoming a common occurrence. A garment factory on the outskirts of the Bangladeshi capital of Dhaka caught fire Saturday evening, leaving at least 110 people dead and dozens injured. The blaze which broke at around 7.30pm lasted for 14 hours. 
Local firefighters rescued more than 100 injured and recovered over 100 dead bodies from the scene. A factory official speaking on condition of anonymity said there were around 5,000 employees in the factory, but fortunately most of them were outside during a shift change when the fire broke out. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Local police suspect that the fire may have been caused by a short circuit in the factory's electrical system. It is believed the factory mainly supplies garments to international supermarkets such as Walmart. Bangladesh is one of the two major garment exporters in the world after China because of its cheap labour cost. Now many are asking what safety measures could have been taken to prevent such a large number of fatalities. Hundreds have gathered in the Indian city of Mumbai today to remember the victims of the 2008 attacks. The incident which killed over 160 people was carried out by Islamists claiming to take revenge for India's rule in Kashmir. The only surviving gunman convicted of taking part in the attack was hung last week. On the fourth anniversary of the 2008 Mumbai attacks, family members remembered their loved ones who lost their lives at a memorial service in the city today. Ten militants arrived on the Mumbai shoreline in a dinghy on November 26, 2008, before splitting into four groups and embarking on a killing spree. They held off elite commandos for up to 60 hours in two luxury hotels and a Jewish center in the city. 166 people were killed in the attack. Pakistani national Mohammed Ajmal Kassab was the enduring image of the bloody assault, which traumatized India and raised fears of copytack attacks on foreign cities. Pictures of the boyish gunman were published around the world. Kassab was executed earlier this month. The family members of the victims welcomed the government's decision to hang Kassab, but cautioned that the wounds of the 2008 attacks would never fully heal. I would request uh, the government not to consider this as an end to 2611, because I don't think 2611 is ever going to end and Mumbai is ever going to forget. And uh, if the government forgets, then it becomes our responsibility to not let them forget. Although it is now four years since the incident, for many here, the events of 2008 are still fresh in their minds. Australia's government has apologised to hundreds of victims of abuse within the military today, clearing the way for victims to receive compensation. Addressing Parliament, Defence Minister Stephen Smith acknowledged that soldiers, sailors and members of the Air Force had suffered abuse, often by superiors under the excuse of toughening up younger recruits since the early 1950s. Uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, today as Minister for Defence, I deliver an apology on behalf of the government to the men and women of the Australian Defence Force who have suffered sexual or other forms of abuse in the course of service to the Australian Defence Force and their country. Now we move on to some sports news. Brazil's FIFA 2014 World Cup mascot, a blue and yellow armadillo, was yes yesterday officially named as Fulico following an online vote. The name of the three-banded armadillo, an endangered species indigenous to Brazil, was announced on television. The name Fulico was chosen by 48% of the 1.7 million votes, trumping the two other options, Zuzico and Umbicho. Now let's take a look at the world of arts and culture. Hundreds of people gathered at a New Zealand park to meet the costume makers of the upcoming movie The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. The film, which was created by Sir Peter Jackson, is due to be released by the end of this week and has excited fantasy seekers from across the world. The event gave fans an opportunity to see exactly how the outfits were made. So these pelts here are the Stansborough Greys. They're the flock of grey sheep that we use to make all the kind of fabric. So we did a bunch of cloaks for the Lord of the Rings, which is what this fellow here is wearing, as well as supplying a bunch of the pelts for the Hobbit. So these appear throughout the film. We're not quite sure where though, because we haven't seen the film yet. <laughs> 
We're here to celebrate The Hobbit. We've returned to Middle Earth. We are Middle Earth. Yeah, <laughs> we're we're here to sort of to sell it to celebrate the um, the film Peter Jackson and Weta Workshop, and yeah, just love it. That's all we have time for. But before we go, let's take a look back at the day's top stories. Violent clashes continue in Egypt over the president's new decree. The death toll from a factory fire in Bangladesh reaches over 100. And Brazil announces the name of its new 2014 World Cup mascot. Thanks for watching. For more information, do visit our website www.levant.tv. Join us tomorrow at the same time. Until then, from all of us here, goodbye.